They can mm -hmm. d d uh, uh, stimulate evil doing, and as you said, they can also uh, uh, stimulate constructive uh, behavior too. Where we want to mm -hmm. change the world for the positive, uh, so we should screen our thoughts there. Is yeah, that what just saying? make them go away, dismiss them mm -hmm. as uninvited uh, insects that fly around the room, and don't berate yourself that you're an evil person because this bad thought came into your head. We're all swimming in an atmosphere that has been created by the whole of humanity, so it may not be a thought that you individually have created at all, but when you become aware of it, tell it to go away. It yeah. doesn't belong there. Okay, but they're powerful forces mm -hmm. for good and, and yes. evil. When yes, we should really both. challenge them as they come into our, uh, yeah. our head. Yeah. Uh, Energy Follows Thought is, is the title of a pamphlet from uh, Triangles. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us something about Triangles. Triangles is um, a service, uh, a type of meditation which is used as a service to humanity. And uh, it works with the principle that energy follows thought. In this way, groups of three people who agree to link up with each other daily in meditation form a triangle, three points. The, the three people are the three points of the triangle. They link in thought with each other, not necessarily at the same time, but just a commitment to a daily linking. Then they see their triangle lighted and um, radiating with spiritual energies of light and goodwill as a part of the whole planetary network of triangles. I think we've talked about this in previous programs, that for me... Uh, uh, a symbol of the Triangles Network would be the starry sky at night at the time of the new moon when the sky is especially black and the stars are so brilliant. That might be one image of, of the Triangles Network, of all these lighted triangles intersecting and interconnected with each other and forming a kind of a bowl over the, the earth and humanity, a protective... Um, aura or shroud, radiating energies of light and goodwill through the triangular links formed by people who are committed to the upliftment of humanity. And then the person, when he has created this image in his mind, in his meditation, then says silently the great invocation, which we close each radio program with. And by saying the great invocation, you are uh, invoking spiritual energies of light and love and power to um, pour into the world and particularly light and goodwill to radiate throughout human consciousness. So energy follows thought. The energies that are invoked of light and goodwill radiating through human consciousness gradually uplift, purify, redeem human consciousness. Yes, and I think the key word is in the uplift and redeem <clears throat> that you mentioned because that is the basic uh, function, I think, of the triangles as a geometric uh, form. Uh, you want, might want to ask why a triangle because um, a triangle is, is, in the writings of Alice Bailey, a triangle set is the basic geometric form of all manifestation whether it be the manifestation of a solar system or of a human being. The basic geometric form. form yeah. And the triangle is, is symbolized in man by the, um, and men and women, of course, by the two eyes, the left eye and the right eye, and then what they call the third eye, or the, uh, the uh, Ajna center eye. And it's these three, because... With every triangle, <clears throat> there is a, um, a function. Two, two of the points uh, represent the two polarities of negative and positive, and then the third point represents the synthesizing point that lifts up and redeems, and that's where the redemptive nature of the triangles comes in. And coming back to the idea we mentioned earlier that goodwill will be the saving force um, of humanity, triangles invokes goodwill into human consciousness. Absolutely, and uh, the triangle uh, is also embodied in, as you say, in the great invocation because it's the invocation for light and love and the energies of the will to good. And uh, those are the threefold nature of uh, of the basic triangle. Sarah mentioned um, Alice Bailey before, and she mentioned the autobiography of Alice Bailey. And 
in fact, all of the dialogue that emanates uh, from this show, uh, all the dialogue in this show emanates from the works of Alice Bailey. Alice Bailey wrote 24 volumes of books, and the dialogue that we have on this show all emanates from one of her 24 volumes of books. And what we're speaking about today, Energy Follows Thought, you can find uh, a lot of information and explore that particular topic further if you read a book called Discipleship in the New Age, one of Alice Bailey's books. And also in addition to that, we'll be very happy to send you a gift today. It's called Energy Follows Thought, wonderful uh, uh, pamphlet, and it has a lot of information that uh, captures what we're speaking about in this particular show, and there are so many different parts of it that uh, I like a lot. Uh, you'll learn more about triangles, you'll more, learn more about the concept of energy following thought, and the science of mind is one of the topics within the pamphlet. I think you'll find that to be interesting, and you'll want, want to probably read it several times. Uh, and also the prayer that uh, Sarah mentioned, the great invocation, which you can hear at the end of the show, is also uh, meant, uh, mentioned in the pamphlet. I don't know if we'd call it a prayer. It's, it is what it is, it's an invocation. Mm -hmm. It is a prayer, okay. Mm -hmm. So once again, if you want to uh, uh, receive this gift, uh, the pamphlet, Energy Follows Thought, you can certainly do so by giving us a call on our toll-free number, and that's one eight six six. 695-8247. Once again, it's one 695 8247 An easy way of remembering that number is one 866 lucis Think of New York Lucis, one 866 lucis Our website is www.lucistrust.org. And our email is New York, uh, New York at Lucis Trust. Org. If you key into our website, which once again is www.lucistrust.org, uh, you can hear any of our um, uh, previously ar archived library of shows. I think you'll find them interesting. We've done many shows on a variety of different topics, uh, all emanating from the works of Alice Bailey. And also, please remember that the show is funded by the generous donations of our listeners. And we need and welcome your support. And although you can purchase uh, the Alice Bailey books at Barnes & Noble, Amazon.com, uh, Borders, and other bookstores, you can get a discount if you order all 24 volumes of the Alice Bailey books. The only place to get a discount is ordering directly from the Lucis Trust organization uh, at the toll-free number 1-866-NY-LUCIS. And and call us up. We'll be happy to send you the uh, pamphlet, Energy Follows Thought, for free. And also, if you'd like a general package of information uh, uh, about who we are, what we, what our theme is, and what approach we take to philosophy and spiritual philosophy, we'll be happy to send you the general package, package of information by calling on that same toll-free number. Uh, and back to our theme for today. Do you think that the realization is growing? that essentially people create the world they live in. I think it is becoming more and more a recognition. <clears throat> I mentioned earlier that people seem to sense that uh, they shouldn't indulge certain lines of thought or conversation. That, I think, is more apparent today than a few decades ago. Uh, but I think, like most things, it's a realization that's still being developed, and it isn't very carefully thought through by a lot of people. I mean, I've heard certain New Age schools of thought that teach that you make yourself sick by your thoughts, you make yourself well by thinking good thoughts. Well, I know a lot of very good people who have fought terrible illness, and I've known some not very nice people at all who have been pictures of health. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a bit simplistic. They're, the causes of illness are, are very complex and probably are karmic, meaning they might be inherited from past lifetimes. I don't believe ever, ever in blaming the victim. Uh, that's so easy. But the idea that uh, we do create our reality through the quality of what we desire, uh, that's certainly something we could all benefit from. It's said that uh, two emotional qualities especially mobilize all of us. One is selfish desire and one is fear. And we could all begin to look in areas of our life to see where those urges are uh, active within us. Yeah, I think 
most 